Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at the seventh required practical for AQA level biology and that is the use of chromatography. So chromatography is a technique that is used to separate compounds and the context that was given in the specification was um, the separation of chlorophyll molecules from leaf effectively and then the RF value needed to be deduced so that that could be compared to known values to work out the identity of the pigment. Now it's more likely that they'll use a different context in the exam However, the sort of process is still the same. Um, so, for example, chromatography, could they could give the context of, you know, a specimen of blood that was found there needed to be analysed, so the compounds needed to be analysed. Or they had different proteins and they wanted to analyse the sequence of amino acids and they wanted to separate the amino acids using chromatography-based um, practical or they sort of used electrodes to separate them out, in which case positively charged amino acids would move to the negative electrode and so on. Um, so whatever context they give you, the fundamental concept that you need to know behind that is that we can A, work out an RF value because it's a constant ratio, compare it to known values, and B, it's for separating compounds. So if, for example, the context they use is a paper chromatography, the standard sort of response for the method that you should give is as follows. So draw a pencil line, okay, a few centimetres from the bottom um, of the chromatography paper. Um, then, so this is using the context of the leaf, so extracting chlorophyll molecules, okay, photosynthetic pigments from leaf. So extract pigment by crushing leaf with a capillary tube. Then the solvent, um, the, the chromatography paper needs to be placed inside the solvent in order to allow the solvent to rise, okay? So place the chromatography paper in solvent, solvent will rise along the paper, okay? Then the solvent front needs to be marked, okay, and that's the sort of distance that the solvent will travel at the top, okay? So mark the solvent front. Then the pigment needs to sort of be placed there, and then the pigment will rise up the length of the paper, okay? And an RF value can thus be worked out. And the way in which this can be worked out is by finding the distance that is moved by the spot, okay? So this is the pigment or whatever was put on in the middle of the pencil line, and the distance that the solvent moved, okay? So distance moved by spot divided by distance moved by solvent. OK, and this is effectively a ratio then because it's the ratio of the distance moved between the spot to the solvent. And then because it's a ratio, why is that good? Well, that can be compared to known values and the known values will give you the identity of the compound. So common questions that they could ask involving chromatography are as follows. So number one, suggest and explain the advantages of calculating RF values. Well, we've kind of just discussed this. The advantage is that they can be compared to a database to identify the compound, okay? So again, they love the word comparison. So compared to a database of known values to identify the compound, as RF value is a ratio, so it will be constant, okay? It's a ratio of spot to solvent distance, therefore it will be constant. Why does the solvent front have to be drawn before the paper chromatography dries, okay? So draw a pencil line, a few um, there, and then it says to mark the solvent front after the solvent has rised. Well, if we wait 10 minutes after we've placed it in the solvent to mark it, well, the solvent's obviously going to fade away. So the line, so the solvent will not be visible. The solvent front will not be visible. Therefore, as soon as we dip the chromatography paper in the solvent, we need to mark the solvent front. If we don't, the solvent front will not be visible when it dries. So we cannot calculate an accurate RF value. And because of that, the ratio will not be what it should be. And therefore, we might not be able to identify whatever the compound is. Okay, a hazard involved with chromatography is perhaps the use of the solvent, okay? So solvents that can be used might be harmful. Um, so in order to sort of, so they could ask you to suggest, you know, one way in which to prevent that well, you should work in a well-ventilated environment, you should um, not leave it on, on the edge of workbenches, okay? You should wear gloves and handle with care and so on because it could be, you know, corrosive or irritative. When calculating RF values, the middle of the spot is measured, explain why. So why do we work out the distance using the middle of the spot and um, work out the distance that was travelled by the spot? Well, it allows for comparisons because it standardises the readings, okay? So if we want to look at several different sort of leaves and the different components that are in there, um, we need to make sure that we measure the middle of the spot, at, which is on the baseline, the bottom line of the paper chromatography, in order to compare it um, so that we can have a more accurate result. So an application question they could ask is, a student used the veins of a planet paper chromatography practical, the veins transport water and nutrients, it just nothing to suggest why. 
well, he uses the veins of the plant, okay? So that's the key here. If the veins of the plant were used, well, there will be no pigment, okay? That is found in the veins of the plant, okay? So because um, there was no pigment found, nothing will absorb or bind to or move up the paper with the solvent. So with this sort of practical, they could give you any context, but the answers will be similar. Um, and if they ask to explain the method used for paper chromatography, this is sort of the answer you should be giving. And you can even draw a picture as well to um, further expand on what you're saying.